Hi, I'm Ben Harrington. I'm an agronomist from Edafoss and I'm here today to talk to you about cover crops. Um, so here we are on one of my clients' farms. Uh, what we've got here at the moment is oil radish. Um, there's a whole variety of cover crops you can do, but there's a few points we'd prefer to cover with clients on what they'd like to do. We do have some golden rules which we will attach to this video as a link. Um, which will be very handy for a lot of people to look over and I would say stick to as many as possible. So one of the first things I'd like to cover, uh, diversity. Is it important? What can we do with it? So firstly a lot of people say diversity is key. Now it absolutely is a necessity but when you first start out with cover crops it's, it's not important. So when you first start out you want to think what are your limitations? Is it weeds? Um, you want to increase organic matter, is drainage a problem, and you want to manage those issues. So you want to have something like oil radish, either to deep penetrating roots, punch through the soil, help drainage, and you want to have bulk on the top to increase organic matter, um, or do you want something to fix nitrogen to help them out as a fertiliser later on, increase soil vitality, soil fertility, um, or do you want something to help reduce pests in the future? Uh, so there's many options that you can do, but initially diversity is not key um, and it's better to start out somewhere on the important things and move along there, improve it slowly and then move into diversity when things start to improve and progress. And once your organic matter levels raise, then actually when you put the diversity in, you'll actually retain what you put in. Whereas otherwise, if you start out on bad conditions, you can lose a lot of the species that you put in because they're not suited to those conditions at the time. So secondly what we'd like to cover with you is how much ground cover do I need? Now ideally we want 100%. So 100% would reduce soil erosion, it helps increase weed competition, um, it would also increase the bulk and the production that you get out of what you're putting in. So it's certainly in terms of weed competition, if you don't get the 100% is when you start to reduce in percentage you get more and more weeds in there. And weeds will be an issue because depending on the cover crop you have it can go to seed, you get more seed return, you might create problems later on in the rotation um, otherwise you know you want to perfect what you're doing for the limitations and issues that you're managing. So if you have reduced productivity from that cover crop you're not going to get what you want. So thirdly on the terms of seed as well, you don't want to use such a low seed rate that you're going to lower productivity, lower the weed competition, um, and you just got to think about establishment rates. And if you know you're going to get poor establishment, think about upping seed rates in certain places. Um, don't skimp on it, it is important, it will have a big impact. And then fourthly, what a cover crop is for actually is uh, it's to collect carbon, is to assimilate nitrogen, and it's to retain all of the nutrients that it will produce. Um, and that is the most important factor of what cover crop does. So if you're not managing to utilize that properly, then it's not gonna be effective later in the rotation. You won't use it as an effective fertilizer. It's not gonna improve biology so much and it won't increase the soil vitality. You've gotta think of all factors. How can you help improve it? Is there pests that are holding it back? Are weeds holding it back? How can you manage those issues? Get around that. It's best to speak with your agronomist or specialist just to find out is there anything that you can do to help things move along um, and how best to get the most out of what you're putting in. It is expensive to grow cover crops so utilising what you've done as much as possible would be ideal. Um, and we know if you can collect as much carbon and nutrition as possible, we know with cover crops, you know, oil radish, we can get 200 kilos of nitrogen and we know half of that will become available for the next crop. So generally, as soon as you take it out, it will take about 45 days for the cover crop to start to decay and start to become available for the following crop. So do think about this. If you have a frost sensitive cover crop, if that gets taken out by the frost, first frost early in, in the year, um, then actually, are you gonna retain those nutrients all the way if you were gonna be spring drilling? So actually, if it gets taken out early, you're gonna start to lose nutrients and you won't maintain them and be able to utilize them when you first drill your spring crop. That's a very important factor and you've got to think about those things. Um, 
Sometimes you will have to take cover crops out quite early. That will be down to conditions. Uh, if it's wet and you need your soils to dry out, then you're going to have to take it earlier, take it out a lot earlier because the wind has to get in, it has to decay, and you have to get those conditions. Whereas if it's going to be wet and you leave it, you just won't get the drill in and you're going to miss the boat for, for spring crops. So here we are again, same farm, different field. But what we have here in the backdrop is a four-way mix. So at the moment we're actually looking more into diversity now. Um, so what we have in here, we have oil radish, got phacelia, got vetch and oats. So each of these will go into different things. And what we've specifically looked into here is horizontal and vertical architecture. This is very important when you look into mixes. But first things first, first we have oil radish. Now we've chosen this, it's got very deep penetrating tap roots, it's a punch down, it's got good cover, it's upright growth. Um, so this goes very well with the things. It's a nitrogen collector, um, so it will hold on to lots of nitrogen. Um, then put, adding into the mix we've got Phacelia, so it's a very quick establishment, fast growth, it's got some very nice fine root structures that will penetrate quite deep down. Um, this is also a very good nitrogen collector just because that very fast growth. Uh, it first, firstly it will grow outwards, um, but once it's established itself across this ground cover it will then start to grow upwards. We've added it to a mix of vetch, now this is a legume, um, so it will fix nitrogen. It will climb up things like oil radish and that will come into the architecture of the mix. Um, and then we've got the oats which are very very good scavengers and if you have nitrogen collectors and certainly nitrogen fixers it's very important to have a scavenger in there just to help hold on to those nutrients that they collect so looking at the architecture firstly i'll do oil radish so here this this field has been drilled three weeks now um, establishment has been very good uh, so it's just starting to get going properly now so what we've got if we've got oil radish here uh, it's starting to create that, that deep tap root here. It's starting to get the top growth up there. And this will just penetrate down and start to shoot upwards now. Um, furthermore, we have next the Phacelia. Now, so far, this is just spread out onto the ground. This is giving quick ground cover. Hasn't started to grow up right just yet. Um, but this will have quite a fine root system that will spread out and down. Um, and they can actually penetrate almost 15 feet deep on good soil conditions. Um, we have the cereal, so this is the oats. This is a very good scavenger. They do have good root systems. They will penetrate down um, and these will just grow up right and I assume you'll know what a cereal grows like, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, and this will tiller out. It will just help feed things. It will bring in some bulk and it will hold on to that nutrition that the other plants will may release over time. Now we have the vetch. This is the legume, uh, this will fix nitrogen, but as this starts to grow, it will start to climb up other structures. So each structure will come together. So, so far you've got the ground cover of the phacelia, that will spread out. You've got your cereal, which will grow upright and tiller. Um, and you've got your oil radish, which will just be upright and, and more bulk. So this will grow up things like the cereals and the oil radish, just to help to fill in that cover. Um, and this is actually an oil radish from the field we were previously in. Uh, this was drilled two weeks earlier. Um, and as you can see, it's starting to get a big bulb there. That will help open up the soil. And this will start to penetrate down. It's got even further. Uh, root structures are starting to produce a lot more bulk there. Um, and it's gonna be off and away quite quickly now. So the importance then of the horizontal and vertical architecture is not only in the ground do you actually fill basically a whole soil profile with roots, uh, deep, shallow, fine. Um, you also fill in the top growth of the plant above ground and get that 100% ground cover and bulk and they work with each other. So each plant isn't competing, it's growing well together um, and this is very important when considering a mix. So when we come to these four-way mixes, we're looking much more at soil vitality. Um, and what comes with this actually you have 
much more natural predators that come into this. Um, you're looking at things like ground beetles for slug predators, they'll become less of a problem. You'll get more earthworms. Uh, these are very key because they're actually major decomposers of organic matter and they compost four times faster than normal composting methods. Um, not only that, you'll actually be able to minimise machinery cultivations because your roots are doing the work um, and you're feeding so much soil organisms. So plants actually themselves will give 30% of their daily glucose production to feed the workforce in their roots. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm Ben Harrington. If there's any more information that we can help you with, please do get in touch. Um, and hopefully later on the season, we'll follow up and show you how things get along. Thank you very much.